Bonjour, bonjour. Welcome to the next video in the series Tout le monde par deux, the grammar recording series uh, for uh, high school students. This video will be on verb tenses. In particular, it's going to focus on le passé composé, but the verbs that we use with the auxiliary verb être. This series is predominantly filmed um, for use for my year nine students who are learning the fundamentals of le passé composé, the past simple in French. So if you are one of my students, it's time to pull out your exercise book and a pen or pencil and get prepared to take some notes uh, during this video. I'll also give you tips of when you should be recording down some information so then you can uh, refer back to that in the future. Alors, ça commence. So, just to quickly recap on, on the idea of speaking in the past. So, up until now, we've focused on speaking on things that are, that are occurring in the moment. Um, so, whether that is whether we do our work or we are doing our work or we do do our work. That's what we've focused on now is just the present tense in French. And we've learned how to speak about actions that are occurring at the present time. Now, of course, what we're focusing on is things that happened in the past. So we looked at this statement in the last video, which was le samedi, je vais à la pâtisserie et je mange un croissant. So as I said, this is something I do every Saturday because it's a habitual action. I can use it um, to talk in the present tense. So je vais, I go to the pâtisserie et je mange and I eat a croissant. However, if it is now Saturday afternoon, and this is an action I want to describe to someone saying that I've already done that today, and it's a completed action, all said, done, I did go to the patisserie and I ate a croissant. Samedi, je suis allé. So, je vais in the present tense has now become je suis allé, speaking in the past. À la patisserie et j'ai mangé un croissant. And I ate a croissant. So this act, these actions occurred in the past, whereas the actions above were occurring in the present. So the idea that we're looking at the past simple in French, the passé composé, is specifically for those actions that are finished and completed in the past. So I went to the pâtisserie, je suis allé à la pâtisserie, I did go this morning, so it's a finished action, and I ate a croissant. J'ai mangé un croissant is an action that is finished and done. What we're going to concentrate, of course, in this video is the verbs like aller, went, that must take être as their auxiliary. So that, that little verb that sneaks in between the person who's doing the action and the action that person is doing, because that auxiliary verb in the center is going to be that verb that really puts these statements in the past. So we need them and we need to use specific actions that go with être. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And last week, we of course focused on avoir. So most verbs are going to pair with avoir. There's only a certain amount of verbs that pair with être. So they're going to be need, need to be learned off by heart, and you just get used to them over time. Ali. So how do we form the past simple? How do we form the passé composé? It's really important to first think about, you know, how we're going to use this être in our compound three-step process. So remembering that we start off the passé composé with the person who's doing the action. So the subject pronoun we start with. Then you're going to link the action that person is doing, the action, with that person, the subject pronoun, via an auxiliary cable, via être ou avoir. So last week and in that slide before, we had manger as the action. So it would be, you know, I, auxiliary avoir, ate. J'ai mangé. Now we can also start to pair actions that take être, like went. Je suis, because it goes with je suis, je suis allé. 
Je suis allé with the action allé went, which is the main action, the verb. And then we say allé because we're expressing it in its past participle. It's the action in the past. So we're also going to change that main action into a past participle. So we're expressing this action in the past. So let's have a quick look at this idea again. You know, the word he went, we're going to use the subject. Il, it's going to be put in the past with our connecting auxiliary verb, être. And in this case, to go with il, we use est. Il est, and then the past participle main action, aller. Il est allé. Il est allé. Where did he go? Il est allé au cinéma, for example. So we've got the subject pronoun followed by the auxiliary, which is our connecting cable, and the past participle. Okay, that's our three step. One, two, three. So let's look at all the different possibilities of the subject pronoun pairing with its auxiliary être. Okay, so let's look at, for example, je is going with suis, tu is going with est, il, elle, en goes with est, nous goes with some, vous goes with et, and then il, elle in our plural forms goes with sont. Okay, so they're always just like what you did with the present tense where you you always have to pair the conjugation with the person who's doing the action so the subject pronoun is going to influence um, the the verb the, the way you conjugate that verb the same thing is happening in the passé composé so we're going to match the subject pronoun the person who's doing the action with the auxiliary so that needs to be conjugated properly depending on who's doing the action. Je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. Now, we're going to look at the past participle. As you can see, there's something a little bit differently that's happening here in comparison to what was happening when we had the auxiliary avoir. And that is, we have to agree now, uh, depending on the gender and the number in the subject pronoun. So, if I'm talking about myself, I'm being a woman, I need to agree uh, with the action. So je, if I'm talking about myself, I'm going to need to add that E. Same thing if you're talking about elle, she, well, it's going to need to put an E on the end there. There's no choice. Same thing's going to happen with number. If you've got many people doing the action, you're going to have to add S on the end. If you have many females doing the action, or many female things, because of course our objects have genders as well, then you're going to need to add ES. Okay, so if it's a feminine subject, you need to add E. If it's a plural subject, you're going to need to add S. If it's a feminine plural subject, you're going to need to add ES. So these are rules that you've already seen for things such as adjectives. So there's many types of gender and plural agreements that must occur in French. But it's important to understand that you only agree for feminine and plural when you're using the auxiliary être, not when you're using the auxiliary avoir. So do not do the agreements if you have an action that takes avoir. For example, if I eat something, j'ai mangé, I do not put any agreements there. I just do j'ai mangé with e accent, but I don't have to have any agreements after. But if I went somewhere, je suis allé, then as a female subject, I'm going to put e on the end. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but let's have a look. And let's do this together so we can now uh, have a little go. So let's change the verb up. We use the verb arriver, to arrive or to come. I like to say come because if someone sends you a text message like, where are you? Then you could reply, oh, j'arrive, I'm coming, I'm on my way. Yeah? So arriver can also mean to come in English. It's kind of got a few different contexts. So let's have a go. I arrived. Now have a go at doing the three-step Subject pronoun auxiliary with être, this one takes être, and give me the past participle. Give the past participle in both the masculine and feminine form. Let's see how you go. 
what you need to be doing with a three step. We got je, subject pronoun, suis, the auxiliary être, which is conjugated to fit with je, to match with je, and then the past participle, arriver, it's regular as you can see, it's got the e accent at the end, and if it were to be a feminine subject, we're then going to add the e on the end of that. I put it in brackets because if you don't know what the context is, if you don't know what the je is referring to, a masculine or subject, a masculine or feminine subject, we'll then put the e in brackets. Like this one though, this might not have so much variety. She arrived. Okay, three step. We need our subject pronoun. We need our être conjugated to agree with the subject. And then we need our past participle with that feminine agreement. Have a go. So what we're looking for as a response is elle, subject pronoun, e, est, with the être conjugation to match elle. As the subject and arrivé e accent with another e on the end to agree with the feminine subject. Elle est arrivée. Elle est arrivée. That last one. Let's have a look at one more because now we're going to look at a plural subject. We arrived. There's going to be more than one person in this action because it includes myself and someone else or more than one else people. We put in your subject pronoun now. And your auxiliary with être, because arrivé must take être as its auxiliary, and then pop in the past participle with its agreements. Now, there's going to be two contexts here. Is it we as in like a group of females, or is it just we, uh, a mixed group or group of males, uh, where you've got this, the plural s? So remember, you can put both as your answer. No as in we, some, as in the être auxiliary that agrees with nous, and then our past participle arrivé, and if it's a group of females, say it was myself and a female friend, I'm going to put es, but if it's myself and a male friend, maybe I just, oh, sorry, I would just put the s. <laughs> voilà. Nous sommes arrivés. Nous sommes arrivés. We arrived. We have arrived. Now, let's go another step further and look at what are our verbs that must go with être. I'm sure you've been wondering this. Okay, I now know that the word went, so to go in its past, must go with être. Je suis allé. We know that now. Now we also know that arriver is in that as a group. So to arrive or to come somewhere is going to pair with être in the past. I arrived, je suis arrivé. Now, there's going to be a group, there's a set of words that you're going to have to learn off by heart. So this is where the memory is going to come in. Let's have a look at a few different ways. These are really common ways that um, people are taught to help memorize these verbs. And, and most of the time, these are verbs, not all the time. This is not a blanket rule, but it applies, you know, most of the time. It's because they're actions that don't, they don't take a direct object. For example, if I say I ate, I can say I ate something in particular. I ate what? I ate an apple. J'ai mangé une pomme. Or, I ate a croissant. J'ai mangé un croissant. So it's taking an object directly after it. What is it? Un croissant. What did you eat? Un croissant. So they're generally verbs that are going to go with avoir. Because they take that object straight away. What? Un croissant. However, try to apply the same thing for to go. I went a croissant. I guess we could say that in slang, unfortunately. But it's not grammatically correct. I went where we could say, but where is not a direct object. So if you can say I do something to something, I go, I eat a croissant, then it's going to take avoir, but I go what doesn't work. So it doesn't take a direct object. And these are generally verbs, therefore, that go with être. If that didn't make any sense to you, 
talk to me about it because I love this concept of what they're called transitive and intransitive verbs. And in the future, they're going to become much more useful for you. But in the meantime, let's just look at a few strategies of how to learn these verbs off by heart so we know these are the ones that come with être. So the very first thing you could use to try to memorize if you like mnemonics is Dr. Mrs. Van de Tramp. So it is an acronym um, to try to learn all the different verbs that you've got. So you could put something like this. Here is a list of all the verbs that you need to learn that pair with F. And a really good way, of course, is to think of good old confused Dr. Mrs. Van der Tramp and go through and remember this list off by heart. So you might want to write this down. Devenir, revenir, monter, retourner, sortir, venir, aller, naître, descendre, entrer, rentrer, tomber, rester, arriver, mourir, and partir. That is one way to learn the verbs we need. Now, if you're more of a visual person, when I was in high school, this is how I learned my uh, verbs with être. I like to use the être house party. Okay, drawing a lot of these verbs exist in our daily lives, so it's really easy to think about it as actions we might do around our house. You know, we leave the house, we come back to the house, um, we might fall over at the home, we might stay at home, we will return, we will, we will hopefully may, maybe die at home. So think of it maybe in, in this way, and you might wish to draw your own house. We might do this in class too, drawing your own house with those actions in there. So if we're going to be at home, we might be born, naître, devenir, become. Now this is hard, this one, devenir. Um, it kind of just sneaks its way in there. It's a really hard action to describe here. Mourir, tomber, descendre, rester, monter, arriver, entrer, venir, aller, sortir, partir, rentrer, retourner, passer. So that's another really good way to think. And sometimes I've drawn a little car under here uh, to help you think about, you know, rentrer, retourner, um, aller, sortir, partir. Those kinds of verbs, maybe you're coming back and forth by a car. So, if you are one of my students, then you're going to want to write these down. So this is a good time to pause the video and note down these verbs. If you want to remember how to conjugate, you're going to have to go back to the first video, which was the passé composé with avoir, and you'll see how to conjugate all these verbs into their past participle. So we don't need to go back over that. Most of them are actually regular. The only ones that are irregular are naître, um, mourir, and that is all. Oh, no, I feel like there's one more and we're about to we're about to come up to it in a moment. Okay, let's do a bit of a review now. A bit of practice. So in the next video uh, we're going to piece everything together and we're going to look at how to actually write in the past. So how are you going to express yourself using the passé composé? It's really important now that we use the grammar that we learn how to use it and we should start using it in context. So that will be the next video. For now let's have a look at um, trying to test ourselves a little bit on what we can remember from this video and how we can actually form the passé composé with verbs using être as the auxiliary. So let's go back to this concept of à la maison, at home, and try to fit in some actions with, with things that we might do at home, à la maison. So the first one, have a go at, at uh, translating this, I went. So it's using the verb aller. I'll give you a few moments to translate this sentence. I went. And of course we could say, you know, I went home. The answer is je suis allé. Now regardless of whether you are a masculine or feminine subject, it's always good to get in the practice of adding that extra E. If you put it in brackets, then you'll also remember to admit it when you've got a male subject, a masculine subject. 
Je suis allé. Next. You, in the singular, so the tu form, came home using the verb rentrer. Okay, it's using être as, an, as its auxiliary. Have a go. Remember that you, in the singular, could be either a masculine or a feminine subject. So, have a go. Rentrer is a regular past participle as well. So, it's going to take its regular ending. The answer is tu es rentré. Tu es rentré. You came home. Tu es rentré à la maison. Next. We stayed. We stayed. So really think now about gender and plural. Rester is a regular past participle. Okay. A regular ER ending past participle. We don't forget your auxiliary and the verb rester, we stayed. Answer, nous sommes restés. So if it was we as feminine subject, we're going to put that S in there. But it, sorry, put the E in there. The S will always be there because it's more than one. It's plural. So the S must be there. It's only if it's um, a female a feminine subject will be put the E in there. He became, and I've just put, um, you know, in, in terms for the theme of um, Dr. Mrs. Van der Tramp, maybe he became a doctor, she became a doctor. Have a go with he became a doctor. Now, devenir is the verb, which I didn't put in there for your apologies. Devenir is regular IR ending for past participles. So what did that IR ending become for past participles? The answer is, il est devenu médecin. Il est devenu médecin. He became médecin. See how there's no agreements here? Because it was a masculine subject, he, he became, il est devenu. So you had devenu, so you had to think of that IR ending became a U ending for the past participle. Il est devenu médecin. Finally, let's do one last one. This one is going to be an irregular ending. They were born. So they, we've got a plural subject. Now, in English, we don't differentiate between whether that is feminine or masculine. So give me both alternatives with the il start and the l start. Now, here in English, interestingly, we have to use something that looks like an auxiliary, were born. They born, we can't just say that they born, they were born in English, so that's very interesting. So you can see the irregularities in English sometimes. Let's have a look at the answer. Ils sont nés so if I'm using the il, I-L-S, I'm just going to do E accent with an S on the end because I have a masculine subject. However, if I'm looking at the feminine subject, L, L sont nés, then I'm going to have to put that extra E in there, E accent, E-S, when I'm writing it out. Great. Hopefully this video has helped you a lot to understand uh, the past tense. So in terms of the passé composé, this is all we need to learn in terms of its grammatical construction. So well done to you. That is over. Now it's time to really practice and memorize this information before coming into class or before we really continue with the writing concept and the use of using the passé composé. So from this video, you're going to want to practice and memorize être in the present tense because remember we're conjugating être as our auxiliary to match who's doing the action. The second thing you're going to want to practice and memorize is the verbs that use être as our auxiliary. So you're either going to learn them by using the acronym Dr. Mrs. Vandertrap on the previous slide or you might want to use the house as the concept if you're more of a visual learner. What I'm also going to do in 
in the bottom here in the comment section I'm going to add a few extra videos um, that include song and drama to help those who really need the rhythm to learn some of these some of these concepts so you can easily get them when we're in class and the third thing you're going to have to practice and memorize is when you've got être as the auxiliary in our past tense you're going to need to apply gender and plural agreements onto the past participle. So that's also a note you're going to want to write down so you don't forget and you can keep on practicing. So when you have avoir as the auxiliary, no agreements, but when we've got être as the auxiliary, yes, agreements. I hope this has been a good, useful video for you. À la prochaine. Au revoir.